This is the G7 SE controller from GameSir, a controller that has the distinction of being the first and currently only officially wired Xbox controller to have Hall Effect sensor sticks. A type of stick technology that despite being around for quite some time has just begun to become much more popular and is getting adopted by a lot more controller manufacturers. And many are interested in seeing it become the new mainline technology that the majority of controllers make use of. As I mentioned at the top end of this video, this is a sponsored video. This controller actually wasn't even even on my radar initially. It was not one I was fully aware of until GameStar reached out and sent one over for me to try out. And it's a really pleasant surprise. The Hall Effect sensor sticks are definitely the main selling point. We'll talk about why that's important in just a moment if you don't know about these. There's a lot of other special features and functions it has going on at the same time that I think makes it a compelling option for its price point. And to begin with, Hall Effect sensor sticks. If you don't know the deal with these, uh, this is a stick technology that's been around since basically the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast used those in its controllers, but it never really got the same level of adoption as potentimeter sticks, which is what you see in the vast majority of official mainline controllers right now, uh, which are also the type of stick technology that has the habit of developing stick drift. Uh, it's always been an issue that could potentially happen with those styles of sticks, but we saw it happen a lot more with the Nintendo Switch, which raised a lot of awareness that with wear, tear, and time, potentimeter sticks can develop stick drift more easily than other styles, which is what makes Hall Effect sensor sticks very intriguing. The simple explanation is that because Hall Effect sensor sticks rely on magnetism to read the stick input rather than having physical pieces that rub together, uh, wear and tear is not a thing that's going to cause it to develop drift over time. Technically, there are ways for Hall Effect sensor sticks to develop drift, but it has a lot more to do with whether or not you constantly expose the controller to a very large and very strong magnet very often, which I'm guessing is not going to be a problem for the vast majority of users out there, especially compared to, again, other sticks just having wear and tear cause drift over time. This is why if you ever break out an old trusty controller that you had from a past system that you used a lot, you may have noticed that, oh, it actually does have drift as an option. Whereas if you had a Dreamcast controller and broke that out today, it's not gonna have that. And so if stick drift is a thing that you've encountered in the past with another controller and you don't wanna deal with it again, or you've just heard about stick drift and it really scares you and you just wanna make sure you have a controller that is future-proofed against that particular issue, well, something with Hall Effect sensor sticks like the G7 SE is the way to go. As I mentioned at the start of this video, there are a lot of other special features this thing has to offer. Uh, to begin with, just as far as how the general shape, feeling, and style of the controller goes, uh, obviously it is designed to very much mimic the official Xbox controller in terms of its general shape and feel, though there are some major differences between its style and the current Xbox core controller. Uh, it's a little closer to the Xbox One style controller, primarily when you look at the D-pad, which does have that more traditional plus shape rather than the faceted D-pad on the official one. However, outside of that, as far as grip shaping goes, ABXY placement, uh, distances between buttons where the menu buttons are and everything, it feels like very much the same controller with a couple little extra added bits that we'll talk about in a second. As far as how buttons and sticks feel, uh, you will notice the sticks do have an anti friction ring, so it has the nice little smooth gliding motion when you're using it in a circle. You're not really feeling any real friction there. The ABXY buttons do have a little bit of extra stiffness to them, which is something that I find happens with a lot of third-party controllers. They do feel good, but I do think the original Xbox controller feels a bit better. Left and right bumper feel great, and the triggers feel basically the same as an OEM controller from Xbox. One thing worth noting about the controller is that the faceplate is attached using some very light magnets, and so it's not very hard at all to pry off and remove the controller. So if you wanted to customize the faceplate in some way, you could take it off the controller and do what you will. Whether that's drawing on it, painting in some way, you have options for customizing this faceplate yourself if you wish. Now, one thing worth noting is that while I am holding this controller nice, free, and clearly right now, this is actually, in fact, a wired controller. Uh, you'll see right here that we have the port for plugging in the USB-C cable that goes USB-A into your Xbox Series X or S. The cable is detachable, but the controller will not operate in any kind of wireless way. It is meant to be used with your system or PC in a wired mode. So the ability to remove the cable does give you a nice, really clean way of putting the controller away or traveling around with it, so you're not worried about how much the cable is bending from where it's connecting to the controller. Uh, but it is not one that works wirelessly. Now, as for special features and customization, there's actually a pretty good list of stuff that this has to offer, despite looking like a fairly simple controller on the front. Uh, to begin with, you do, of course, have a pair of remappable back buttons, giving you the ability to remap any of the face buttons or shoulders, so you can fine-tune your controller experience depending on the kind of game you're playing. One very interesting choice they've made with this controller is that Normally, one thing that people can be a little afraid of with back buttons is whether or not it's too easy to accidentally click them when you don't want to. So, you know, maybe it's a good thing that you have an easy way to hit the reload button in the game, but you don't want to accidentally press it when you don't mean to reload. And so, something these have is a little security switch that prevents the back button from being used. 
So if you're in a situation where you're playing a game where you actually don't want to make use of what the back button is currently programmed to do, you just flip the switch on the back and now the button just doesn't press at all. It doesn't register it, doesn't have any kind of clicky feedback. It just becomes a little protrusion on the back of the controller. So if you don't want to be making use of back buttons for certain games, you can lock them that way. If you want to make use of them, you just unlock it. And I will say that while they are fairly prominent on the back of the controller, I haven't really had an issue with accidentally clicking them at all. There's enough resistance that you definitely need to intentionally press down for when you want to use it but if that is something you're scared of this lock button is a really nice little peace of mind now these buttons can be assigned and customized using game series software which we'll talk about in a little bit but there's also the option to quick assign them by making use of this little m button right here where you can just press down on whichever button you want to customize and then press the button you want to assign it this m button also can be used to activate a couple useful shortcuts when paired with the d-pad specifically for chat audio if you're using a headset uh, the controller obviously has an audio jack coming out of the bottom of it so any traditional wired headset that isn't USB based, you can plug into the bottom of the controller. There's a little mic mute button right here. So if the headset you're using doesn't have its own mic mute option, you can just press this. It glows red to let you know that now that is muted. Uh, and with this little remappable button right here, you can use it with the D-pad to do a variety of chat control functions. Uh, holding it down and pressing up and down on the D-pad will increase or lower volume, whereas pushing it left and right will change your game chat balance. So if the game's too loud and overrunning chat, or maybe the game's just a bit too quiet, you can quickly press this button right here to change how that's balanced. Now, as I mentioned, there are also some additional customization features you can make use of by using GameSir's app. Uh, one thing that's really handy to note about this is that for some third-party controllers, customization software is exclusive to PCs or mobile, so you have to make use of an additional device. Uh, in the case of the GameSir software, GameSir Nexus, you can use that on a PC if you want, but it actually is available as an app on the Xbox directly itself, so there's no need to make use of any other device. Within GameSir Nexus, you'll be able to access a variety of different customizations customization options. Uh, you have more full control over fine tuning what every button on the controller does. So on top of remapping those two back buttons, you could also choose to just remap any other button on the controller if you want to. If you want to swap A and B for whatever reason, that is something you can do. You also have a variety of customization options for these sticks. Uh, one thing I will note in particular is the stick sensitivity. I felt like when I very first used this controller fresh out of the box, the dead zones on it were just a little larger than I was comfortable with. It felt like I really had to move the stick a decent distance before more minute fine tune motions can be put in, which was a little annoying for when I was trying to like carefully aim a weapon. Uh, so that was something that I was able to fix and adjust by lowering the dead zone on the controller. Something you do get a nice little warning for because if you make it too sensitive, uh, you might start to get inputs when you don't mean to actually be pressing it because of how sensitive the stick is. But just bringing it down from its base level from 10 down to five uh, gave a nice level of responsiveness that I really enjoyed. On top of that sensitivity adjustment, you can also do things like swap the left D-pad and left stick if you want to be using the D-pad in games where that feels more appropriate to you, but for whatever reason, they don't use D-pad for movement controls. You can also adjust the sensitivity and readings on the triggers if you want them to not read whenever you slightly press them, but instead have it register when you press down a little bit more. Uh, and there are four separate rumble motors inside this controller, similar to the official Xbox One controller, where you have two in the grips, two higher up closer to the triggers, and you can individually customize how hard each of these rumbles. So if you don't like the feeling of intense rumbles at the top of the controller, but you don't mind it in the handle grip, you can adjust it that way. You could turn them all off. You could turn them all up to max. You're given full control over each of those individual motors to fit what you personally prefer. Last but not least, as far as the GameSir Nexus software goes, uh, along with all these customization options, you are able to save them into multiple different profiles, up to three in total. So through that app, you can customize the different options and swap between them. So if you have one option that you like using for shooter games, but then another style that you'd rather use for fighting games or 3D action games, you can swap between those and have each one saved and titled appropriately. Overall, this is a controller that really pleasantly surprised it for its price point. It is a little on the higher side as far as wired controller options go, but the buttons and stick quality on it feel great. There's a really good special feature list. And again, I think the main thing they're really leaning into here as far as what makes this an interesting and compelling option over other controllers on the market is the fact that when it comes to Xbox options, this is the first one to offer a Hall Effect sensor stick. So if drift is a thing that you're afraid of, if you're just looking for a solid wired controller option to use on your Xbox or PC, this is one definitely worth taking a look. I do have a link posted down below in the description if you want to check it out and maybe grab one. I do want to thank GameStar once again for sponsoring this video to showcase and talk about the G7 SE. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button to let me know. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys later.